Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today I'm discussing stem cell therapy for stroke in South Africa. So I'm going to talk about the facts on stroke, what happens after a person has a stroke, some of the traditional treatment options available, stem cell therapy we'll talk about, then some of the research on stem cell therapy for stroke patients, and then a little bit about our program specifically. So stroke is a major cause of death and disability worldwide with a one in six lifetime risk. The risk doubles for uh, individuals for each decade after the age of 55. Most strokes that individuals have are ischemic, and that's 87%. And that's due to an obstructed blood vessel supplying the brain. Hemorrhagic stroke is when a weakened blood vessel ruptures and permeates the area. Now, a TIA is basically a warning stroke. Um, it can cause symptoms that are temporary and reversible. 12% of ischemic strokes are preceded by a TIA. So it's a huge warning sign, should not be ignored, and definitely get checked out for treatment. What are the risk factors? Um, there's quite a few, um, and most of these are uh, uh, lifestyle uh, changeable. Smoking, um, hypertension, uh, use of alcohol, um, illegal drugs, oral contraceptives can potentially be an issue. Okay, so what are the symptoms of a stroke? They're obviously going to vary a lot between patients, but um, onset of weakness, uh, vision issues, facial drooping, uh, speech abnormalities as well. The diagnosis um, is often made by a physical exam and then a CAT scan. Um, here, you see a left hemispheric ischemic stroke on a CAT scan. So right on a CAT scan, right is left, left is right. So you can see it on our right, but the left side of the brain. Traditional treatments. Uh, for an ischemic stroke, there's some clot-busting drugs. Um, time is uh, critical with those. Thrombectomy, um, take out the clot, anticoagulants, um, and then uh, a stent placement. Um, or a, a catheterization. For a hemorrhagic, you might need a metal clip um, and then various uh, things such as physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. Various supplements can help with uh, nutritional counseling and, and lifestyle changes. You know, stop smoking, uh, control your blood pressure, so on and so forth. So the time frame of, of recovery for a stroke, the first six months has the highest potential you know, the, the body can help repair some of the neurons um, and get some natural recovery. Once you get to 6 to 18 months, it's pretty moderate. It starts to diminish. After 18 months, traditionally, that's you got what you got. You either have to live with the deficits or figure out other ways to get things done. And that's the way it's been. So let's talk about stem cell therapy for stroke. Prior to this, there was really no effective biologic that existed to help with the actual repair of damaged brain tissue after that, you know, 18 months. So there are, as you can see here, six ways that we know at least that stem cells act in the body and the brain. Uh, one, a neuroprotection. They can help prevent scar tissue and, and degeneration. Neuroregeneration. They can help repair and regenerate some of these damaged neurons, astrocytes, glial cells. They're uh, good at reducing inflammation. That's one of the big parts of stroke is it produces a lot of inflammation, which can then lead to further damage in the brain. It can modulate the immune system. It can prevent cells from dying, so it's anti-apoptosis. And it can provoke new blood flow, which is called angiogenesis. So here you see um, a cartoon of how uh, some of these stem cells go to work. So whether it's adipose tissue or from bone marrow, those would be from the, the patient themselves, or um, the donor tissue, which is what we use most commonly. Um, you have the stem cells from that tissue, which then leads to the various um, arrows there, paracontractors, which is cell-to-cell -cell signaling, um, extracellular vesicles, which are exosomes. Basically what you want is for those to uh, help with proliferation of new neurons, astrocytes, glial cells, oligodendrocytes, 
which then provokes brain repair. So like I said, traditionally after 18 months, you just don't really get much brain repair. Um, thankfully, what we've seen in our patients and with uh, there's some research I'll show you here, it, it, it can really help much after that time frame. So um, make sure you read this carefully. There'll be a quiz on this at the end. I'm just kidding. Um, but what you can see is that there's a lot of studies that have been done on uh, stem cell therapy for stroke patients. Um, and you can see in the cells column, cells from, um, a lot of these are from autologous, from bone marrow. And then as you move down, you see umbilical cord stem cells. And then, you know, um, fat um, and so on and so forth. Uh, but the results have been uh, very good. You can see in the dosing column, the amount of stem cells administered is very, very, very high. Um, you know, if you talk about uh, 3 to 8 times 10 to the 6, 10 to the 6 is a million. So let's just go in the middle, 5 million stem cells per kilogram, okay? Um, or actually, it doesn't say per kilogram. So there it might just be 8 million stem cells. Um, now, 1 million stem cells per kilogram body weight is very, very common. Um, you can see down lower, there's 10 million cells per kilogram. Uh, so it's all over the board. There's no definitive uh, dosing protocol um, for them. Um, but the outcomes in most of these studies were fantastic. So here's a study uh, from 2020, stem cell-based therapies for ischemic stroke. It's a review and a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is where you look at a bunch of studies, you pick out the really good ones, and then you combine the results to statistically ana analyze them. So this one came down to nine good studies with 740 patients. So there was no significant difference in mortality between the stem cell group and the control group. And this review showed that stem cell-based therapies can improve the neurologic deficits and activities of daily living in those with ischemic stroke versus the control group, you know, traditional treatment. That's fantastic, and that's what we see all the time as well. Another study in 2019 evaluated 36 patients receiving 1.5 million stem cells per kilogram up to eight years after a stroke. The results were tremendous, with the vast majority of patients seeing significant functional and behavioral benefits, no significant adverse events. And one thing you'll notice, this is up to eight years after a stroke right? Not, the, not just up to one and a half. So even after that time frame, you can get great results. One thing to note is the dosing here. The average adult human weighs, what, 60 kilograms? So 1.5 would be 90 million stem cells. We usually just round that to 100 million. And so you got to make sure that the patient gets the proper dose. If the patient doesn't have a good outcome, oftentimes it's because they didn't get enough. Here's another study. Um, out of University of Minnesota, they did a single phase one trial, investigated human umbilical cord blood for treating stroke. They infused it IV in 10 males, three to nine days post onset, patients were followed for a year. There were no adverse events related to treatment. That's what we see typically as well. It's a very, very safe treatment. By three months, all patients had demonstrated improvements to neurologic recovery. Um, so this was a small study, great results, but you know, not really statistically significant. Um, here's another um, conglomeration of, of studies and looking at IV, intraarterial, intracranial, intrathecal, intranasal. So a lot of different ways that these treatments can be administered. IV is okay, but you know we have this thing called the blood-brain barrier. So it's very good at preventing IV intravenous substances from getting to the brain. Intraarterial is a little bit better, but um, it also doesn't get much to the brain, 0.6%, whereas IV was about 1%. Intracranial um, is not really an option. I mean, it's, it's a great thought, but you know, you gotta drill holes into the, the skull. That's just not uh, very, very good. Intrathecal, this is what we utilize. Uh, direct, direct access to cerebrospinal fluid, it's less complex than intracranial, um, so it's a fantastic option. Intranasal is a next best opportunity. Um, you can get the cells uh, through um, the crib reform plate, you know, back in the, in the nasal cavity, uh, so you do get better permeation into the brain. 
How many cells do you need? It's not black and white, but we do know that numbers matter. We base it off of a patient's weight, anywhere from one to five million stem cells per kilogram. So, you know, if you weigh 80 kilograms, you know, just multiply that by two, let's say, and it's gonna be between 150 to 200 million. We don't give that in one day. You would need to come for multiple days, okay? For safety reasons, we split it up. I do want to mention that um, we don't give patients embryonic stem cells. Those are the ones that come from aborted fetuses. They uh, forget the ethical issues. They're just not safe. They can cause rejection. They can cause tumors. Uh, so they're not ready for clinical use anywhere in the world. Neither are induced pluripotent stem cells. So run away if anyone suggests those. We use mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells from umbilical cord tissue. That tissue is donated by consenting mothers after a scheduled C-section in an FDA-regulated program. So we've combined all the essentials for a first-rate program. We have very high experienced doctors. You'll have a dedicated patient concierge representative to help you through the process. We have very safe biologics that come from FDA-regulated labs in the United States with high, high quality assurance, testing for diseases, looking at um, stem cell quality and counts. Um, and we have a convenient location in uh, Johannesburg, so in South Africa. Um, we are allowed to culture biologics for international use. Our labs are accredited. They have a pristine safety record in the U.S. Um, our quality assurance is more stringent than the FDA. We keep the cells usually in the third generation or less. Uh, at the worst, it would be fifth. Some people call it passages. Um, for a lot of the biologics, we don't need any preservative when we cryopreserve, and we can get 95% viability. For those that we do cryopreserve, we still get 85% viability, very high. Um, when patients come into Johannesburg, our office is only about 20 minutes from the airport. We will pick you up and take you to the clinic and the hotel and back. That's no additional fee, that's free. Um, and we do help with all other traffic logisti travel logistics. All right, so we offer the most cost-effective stem cell programs in the world. 11 years, 21,000 procedures. We have very high volume and we use that buying power to transfer those savings to patients. A lot of times patients need repeat therapies after a year or two or whatnot. Um, and we want to make sure that it's not going to, you know, proverbially break the bank. If you go to Panama or China, this 100 million stem cells for us is 7,250 US dollars. That's going to cost you well over 21,000. So you know, like three times the amount uh, in other countries. So 100 million stem cells, we do also give 30 billion exosomes. Uh, we can do that in one day. It's a combination of intrathecal and IV. And then we have the 200 million stem cell program. That's going to be at least two days, maybe three. And then we have quite a few patients who know what stem cell therapy does for them, and they want to get you know, a series, um, and it, we could do it as a, a billion. So uh, the billion stem cell program is really cost effective. We can break that up into multiple sessions. Uh, we've won a lot of awards over the last decade. We've been featured on uh, a lot of news chase stations, um, Forbes, Entrepreneur. Visit us online today at r3stemcell.com slash south-africa. you see a lot of information. That's our website dedicated to South Africa. We do have two clinics in the country. One is in Johannesburg. That's where we do the intrathecal procedures. We also have another one in Umschlange, which is uh, next to Durban over on the coast. Um, the number to call to schedule your free consultation is 27-213-001. 831. So call us. We'll be happy to schedule you for that free, no obligation consultation. Thank you so much for watching.